Good afternoon and welcome to my regularly scheduled <laughs> and regular placement Facebook Live. Um, it's episode number 524 and the topic today is do you settle too easily? I had a subtitle which is going to be are you afraid to settle? So I'll make up with that one as well, we'll see. Anyway, before I do all that stuff, let me introduce myself and tell you who I am and why I'm here. And I'm watching my throat tickle because last night I choked on some jalapeno um, that I had eaten early in the evening. So I'm probably not going to repeat myself tonight with that. So first of all, thanks for being with me. And it is, yeah, it's getting dark already. So it feels like it's nighttime, 25 o'clock. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women create and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine. And every day for the last couple of years, I've done these talks called "Messages from Your Masculine," excuse me, "Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart." We should get the pronouns right there. Um, and today's episode is number five hundred and twenty-four. So I've done a lot of these, and the topic today is: Are you afraid to settle? With a possible caveat: Is do you settle too easily? I should say no. Excuse me, the other way around. The title is. <laughs> Um, do you settle too easily? The other part is, are you afraid to settle? So it's about settling, you may figure that out by now. And I want to speak to this from the point of view of um, the long view, so to speak. Because there, I've, I've had conversations with friends recently, um, and I'm just thinking of how many clients talked about this, been a couple of clients as well, about the regret they face, the regret they admit to for making choices in the past that end up being poor choices of what they want in a relationship. So some of this may reflect for you too, and some of it may reflect for other people, I don't know. So this is some informative, inspirational, provocative, challenging, educational elucidation. All of that in one little talk, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so jumping right in. Most people nowadays tend to have a list of what they want in a relationship. A list of qualities, experiences, sometimes packaging as in what a person looks like, how they dress, how tall they are, how short, etc., etc., etc. Some of those things are personal must-haves, like you've gone close to your heart and you won't let them go. And some of those things are out there saying, it would be really nice to have those things, but if I don't, I can let go of those. So in some ways you actually give up some parts of your list or your vision or your description of what you want in a relationship based upon who's in front of you. Yes, based upon who's in front of you. It's so challenging sometimes to have a qualification list of what you want in a relationship, these list of um, must-haves versus the red flags that are absolutely irrevocably must have these things in your relationship. And then you meet somebody and go, you know what, forget about them, this is perfect. Because you're enamored by or entranced by or lustfully inspired by the person you're in front of. Now I'm not saying that's bad, however, however I am saying that if you are looking to have a long-term relationship that's going to have all these fulfilling qualities and ideas and visions and things you want, to make what is lustfully driving you in front of you, that relationship is a poor choice. There's something else I want to say on that that's coming up, let me see. It. Sometimes, sometimes, that perfect lifelong twin flame soulmate level relationship, whatever you want to call it, does start from a lustful connection. But most often than not, it doesn't. In fact, more often than not, it starts out as a friendship. Because what happens is you discover about somebody's qualities as you get to know them. What they put in their profile on Tinder or somewhere else, or that they portray in their presentation, you also need to test drive them, as it were, to know if that's really true or not. They may act at the beginning like they're always about being good mannered and polite and everything else, but three months in the relationship, they're totally like, it, don't give a flying whatever about you, and they're not expecting you. You may not know that at the beginning, but three months in, you will. So, settling is the tendency, and this is one of the things about settling is, is that as time goes by and the person you're with doesn't step up to the live up to the level you thought they would when they said hi to you, as the time goes by, you're finding yourself in a place where you're putting up with, and you are, putting up with things that don't match what you want because you're too comfortable to leave. Ooh, this is gonna be painful for some people watching this. The choice to be in a relationship that is okay, but not everything they want, 
but slowly but surely the okayness is shrinking because the things you keep discovering about this person are not what you wanted. So four or five years into the relationship, that commitment, you may even be getting abused or neglected or cheated on, and yet you put up with it because you've gotten comfortable to settle into that situation. It may sound like, oh, that's not gonna happen to me. I can guarantee you that for some people, maybe not you, but probably including you, have made choices in a relationship once you're in the relationship to give up things you thought you were attached to for the sake of the relationship you're already in. You'll sacrifice your desires and your real, real wants for the relationship that's in front of you because you're already in it. It's challenging, I understand, to say, you know what, this is not working, I need to leave. But sometimes your best choice is to cut it off as soon as you realize that that's not what's happening, that those things you were very clear about are disappearing like yesterday's Chinese food. It's an interesting analogy that popped in. I guess I'll play with it. And so like Chinese food, the effects of it wear off very quickly. And for some people in relationships, some single people get into relationship, and I'm using people generically because it's men and women facing this one. It's not just one way, it's both ways. There is a, an experience where the enamored, joyful, lustful chemistry of the beginning of the relationship fizzles out like Chinese food the next day, using that analogy again. <laughs> it's too easy to use it, I could use it again. Yet some people stay past that point because they'd rather stay in the comfort of being with somebody else than being back alone again. Because somehow being alone is just being on, on the hard streets of some cold city somewhere, you know, versus being comfortable at home with some person who you're okay with. Not thrilled with, but okay with. So settling is a nasty word to use, but it speaks to so many different things that we do in relationships that we wouldn't normally do if we were really looking at things from the beginning. In 2020 hindsight, one of, these one of these glorious skills that really can kick us in the butt when we look back and go, I put up with this? Versus saying, you know what, I need to leave and be single and take care of myself. And just to quickly include this, I talked about abuse a bit in the early, about neglect and about cheating. There's a spectrum, there's, a, there's a, a range of what is a definite deal breaker for you. Some are very mild, some are very serious. You've got to know for yourself what those are. Because you may give up some of those must-haves at the beginning of the relationship, but as soon as your relationship hits one of those, those red flags, those deal breakers, you need to act on it. Because giving up what you want can sometimes be easier to get, than holding on to what you don't want. And that's a challenge. This is in fact some of the challenges I've had with my clients, not, not the challenge I've had. The challenges my clients have had when we've talked and worked through this, to work through these boundaries, and these barriers of this self-guilt and self-recrimination. I talked about this a few days ago about the... Um, the guilt trip we run, the shame we run on ourselves for relationships that didn't work, and how it gets in the way of our being free. And I talked about how you can get some, some of this up, the, um, the forgiveness practice I recommend, and I talked about that then. But this is a piece of the same puzzle in a sense that we as human beings don't always keep our agreements with ourselves. And this is the thing. Settling for what you don't want because you're already there is a form of breaking agreements with yourself because you know better, but you don't do better. Key difference. Sorry, hang on, I have to grab my glasses, it's getting dark, so it, funny, when it gets darker, my vision doesn't get as sharp, so I can read what you said there, Karen. So, you now know that your past efforts to make a relationship work will really, really be set, settling. Yes, exactly. So you're settling. And that's the thing, is that relationships are work in one way, but not work in another way. Relationships are work when you are passionate about growing together and evolving together. Together being the key word, you do it together. But when it's work where just surviving the relationship is hard work, that's not the same thing. So getting clear about what you value and what's important to you are vital. And frankly, for 90% of the people who go through this challenge, I know being single is actually healthier than being in that relationship. And yes, being single is healthy. Some people look at being single as being a disease or something where you shouldn't have it. It's like you're being ejected from society because you're not in a relationship. Not true. Being single can be a healthy choice. In fact, I'm... <laughs> All right, some self-disclosure. I've been single for quite a while, and I was in a conversation yesterday with a couple of friends, and there was a question about, am I choosing to, am I settling, am, am I choosing not to settle for a relationship because I don't feel I can do what, get what I want? And the real is that reality is, is that we all have our particular journeys on being single or in a relationship. And the guess the bottom line we keep saying is, is you want to be, is like, be true to yourself. You know, to that know yourself, be true, to quote Shakespeare. It's a vital piece. Karen says something else you said. Some of your... 
Oh, sorry, dude. No, fucking the camera. Ah, there we go. Some of, my making, some of you are making it work also involved you dimming your light and dumbing down to some degree. Glad you're past that. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. That's the thing. Is you do dim your light. You do reduce your ability to function when you choose a relationship that's beneath, beneath your um, brightness, for some want of a better word. And that's the thing for relationship choices is you've got to choose relationships that are at least equal to, if not slightly higher than where you are, so you can move up in the spectrum, as it were. And I'm being a bit metaphysical that way. But I'm a spiritual practitioner, so I can use that in terminology. So there. <laughs> so these are just little thoughts to just maybe consider and to think about this. Um, it's vital, frankly, for, for in my life now to make wise choices that are about choosing for my standards that I believe in and for relationships that will work for me versus choosing less than that. And I've been on a few dates recently through different dating agencies that have been setting me up on these dates to help them out. And it's getting clear to me that I'm choosing for myself to say no rather than saying, oh, it's convenient, that's nice, because I know better. And the, the danger of knowing better is you have to do better. For some people, they don't do that. So my invitation to you is to watch what your standards are and to get clear about what you want. In my, I have a, I have a program called Attract the Man You Want. This is about the vision of what you want. This is for the ladies, of course. Well, I guess gay men could use it. It's mostly for the ladies. Attract the Man You Want is a program I created because it's basically the breakdown of getting clear about what you really want and setting the standards for what you will only settle for that and more so that when you create a vibrational match to what you want to attract it happens more easily that's on my website by the way I'll put the link in the comments um, but one of the reminders I'm going to keep I keep saying this for the last few days and it's so critical now for more and more is how self love is so vital for you to have what you want as strange as it sounds your standards get raised when you love yourself more that's the truth and so when you start by self love practicing honoring and respecting who you are your ability to attract what you want in your life in every area will drastically improve. That's why the self-love practice I, I offer on my website, again, I'll put the link in the comments, is such, a, such an underrated but so powerful a practice. And in fact, there's a video on my website, oh, sorry, there's a replay of an interview on my Facebook page that I posted earlier today that was with um, a friend of mine, Lucia. It was about self-love, the overlooked and underrated practice that will change your life in a relationship. So you might want to watch that. Although, to be honest, it's, it's, it goes much beyond that, but it's a good relationship. Good, it was a good um, interview we had. So that's a, it's a YouTube video on my uh, business. It's on my personal page. Maybe on business page, too. Anyway, so you find that on my, website, on my, on my Facebook page. So anyway, having said all that, um, I'll put the links in the comments, and I will put the link in for a discovery session, because if you're having some challenges around the conversation about relationship and you want to learn how to do it better, if you're single and not sure how to get into a relationship again because of past wounds, or if you're just really in a place where you just don't want to make the same choice again like you did last time, I invite you to reach out for a discovery session. And again, I'll put that link in the comments as well. Um, this is a Facebook Live, so it'll be in the comments of the Facebook Live. It also goes on to YouTube, which also have the comment area. I'll put the stuff in there as well. Um, I thank you for watching. Appreciate you being with me as always. Back in tomorrow, same time, same channel. Um, your homework is to consider what is valuable to you, what you really want. You're welcome, Karen. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your input. And feel free to share it out, by the way. Um, replays are on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby author. Also on my YouTube channel, which again you can subscribe to, which is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And also on my podcast now, which you can also subscribe to, which is Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. Subscribe to that to get the audio versions of these of these replays and listen to them anytime you want. Um, if you watch my Facebook lives or want to watch them more regularly, there is a notification button somewhere on the screen, which is where it belongs, around this this video. We can click to be notified when we go live next time. And that will give you a notification when I go live, live next time. Amazing how that works. Um, thanks for being with me as always. I will see you again tomorrow. And uh, take care of yourselves. Bye.